everybody, I was just going to do a, a little video about my homemade th throttle for the 737. Uh, it's all homemade. Uh, it's taken about a year and a half to get to this point. Uh, it's not motorized, and don't really plan on motorizing it anytime soon. Um, but it's got a lot of other features. It's not quite finished yet. Uh, but I don't have sides yet, but you can see on the main levers here and uh, the reversers. Uh, the reversers pivot up high. A lot of people when they make homemade throttles have them pivoting lower for some reason. Uh, I think some other planes might pivot them lower. Uh, actually I actually have interlocks, so when I pull these reverse levers, the main levers won't move. And if I push the main levers up and pull the reversers, they won't go past about that much. Uh, the way that works is there's a little mechanism I built on each lever. When you pull these reversers, it pushes that locking pin up, and there's one of these on each lever. A little locking pin. Uh, <clears throat> each of them has a potentiometer and a, a reverser off micro switch and a reverser on micro switch. Uh, there's a spare reverser switch in one of them. Uh, both of them have the potentiometers. That's what uh, I use to meter the reverse thrust. And there's also an idle detent built in right there, so you don't get anything till there, and then you get up to full. Uh, the speed brake lever has a locked detent. You have to pull it up and back. Uh, I have a auto deploy mechanism. It, uh, it's a lever that comes off of it and uh, rotates this arm right here. It just increases the leverage the motor gives. And then the motor is down in the bottom. And it's actually got a piece of wood. You can see when I move the lever, the front piece arm moves, but the back one doesn't. The back one's connected to the motor. So that just, uh, it's basically a clutch. It allows it to, the speed brake lever to be operated manually, independent of the motor. Uh, but then when the motor kicks on, it, it can move the lever. Uh, the problem with this system is there's a little slack in the motor. Uh, you, I could probably fix this by getting a motor with a worm gear, so there wouldn't be any slack. There's, right now there's just a little slack in the tension a little bit. Uh, it really doesn't matter that much. Um, so a lot of this stuff is, it's all got bolts that won't fall off. Uh, a lot of the bolts deeper down in it, the ones I can't get to very easy, they have a little cotter pins around them. I don't know if you can see down in there. It's really nasty down there already, uh, just from dust and stuff. Uh, if you look down in here, you can actually see these uh, where these two push rods come down and attach to these pieces of wood, and that's actually where the that's where the lever gets his uh, torque from. Uh, I can adjust the bolts on that rod to give it more or less uh, friction on the throttle, and uh, I just made those push rods. I uh, threaded it and put little uh, tie rod ends on. Uh, you can see right there, that's the connections up to the levers with the reverser buttons. Each of them can unplug so I can take the lever out, uh, which is still really hard to get to. Uh, right there you see the parking brake switch. It's just a light switch. It's got a car door lock actuator here at the bottom, so it can be turned off uh, automatically when you hit the tow brakes. Uh, when you look in there, the yep, door lock actuator. Uh, right there is a potentiometers. For the, I'm trying to get it out in here, it's kind of hard. Under that metal plate is the penitentiometers. It's got these pieces of metal that get pushed and pulled from the uh, friction mechanism. That right there, those switches are the fuel cutoff. Um, basically the way it works is when I pull the left one up here, the slack comes up, flips the switch and it gets to the top, and I turn it off flips the switch when I get it to the bottom. That's how those work. Uh, these have their locks and stuff. I cut all these out with the cutoff wheel. That's how I cut this lever out too. Uh, 
that's how that works. The flap lever is a little more simple. It's just got a micro switch down in here for each position. There's two banks of them. Kind of alternates from front bank to right depending on the position. I'm trying to get a view down in there. It's going to be hard. Right there you can see them. It's just got a little washer that will rotate around and hit them. That's going to be hard to see. but uh, It's somewhere in there. Uh, so yeah, I got the flat lever right here. You got to lift it up. It's also got these gates right here. You got to let it down through. That's just cut out of wood, painted with a metallic looking paint. Uh, another mechanism I'm going to add, I'm buying another car door lock actuator uh, for this little armature here. And what it does is for a, uh, if you forget to arm the speed brakes, it allows it to deploy from the down and locked position right here so the door lock actuator will just pull and the motor can take over. Uh, I'll probably actually wire that actuator to the spare switch in here uh, just to make it more simple. Uh, I got the trim indicators. They're all hooked up to a servo but I don't have them interfaced yet. Uh, there's actually a servo for each one of them because they're pretty weak servos but uh, it works. I can move the little arm by hand the other one works too uh, all of them are actually backlit uh, it's not on right now but it's basically just two layers of uh, paper with the clear coat sprayed over it and it's almost like a plastic now it's actually pretty cool how it turned out uh, but uh, since it's two layers of uh, black paper it actually just lights up the letters same with this and there's a little cut out not painted spot on the edge here where the light can shine on the little indicator. It's like that in the real plane. There's little slots so you can see where the indicator is in the dark. Um, so got these uh, switches to put in right here. Um, and uh, I'm going to make trim wheels eventually. And I've got this tube that all the levers pivot on. It's hollow. So uh, I'll be able to put a bearing at uh, each end of the throttle. And there's enough room for a sprocket in this area right here. Like this armature goes out of the way, uh, but there's enough room for a sprocket that I'm going to have good on a trim wheel motor. And I think there's four trim speeds in the uh, real 737, so I've actually got a relay car that does all my motors in there, and it's going to have a relay for autopilot on, uh, so I get that logic. Then I get the flap up or down logic from right here. So that that's the logic for all the um, all the four trim speeds. You got the fastest, which is manual with the flaps down, and then the second fastest is like a autopilot on and flaps down. Or it might be manual flaps up. I, I don't know. I'd have to recheck, but it's going to have all that. Uh, I just got to figure out how to make the trim wheels out of wood or figure out where to buy some or something, But because I want to have the manual cranks on them. I haven't quite figured out if I'll make the cranks functional, like can input into the sim but that's what I want to do so uh, these are my levers just let's look at them closely I got it's a washer with a button in the middle and it's got that lock ring around it like in the the real throttle these labels are just glued on and clear coated over a bunch of times so they're just stuck to it uh, we I actually made these knobs they're made out of wood we made them my friends uh, lathe uh, that's like a year ago um, but this back plate right here is metal, and I cut it with a cutoff wheel. There's a little nick right there. I didn't know about that. Just saw that. Uh, must have happened on a flu last night. Uh, but these are these all this metal is cut out with the cutoff wheel. Same thing for this right here. So it, uh, this is the back side of the lever. This, there's a little hole here with the wiring and everything, so it's covered up. A real lever only has like one thin piece of metal running down, but I have two since this part's wood and it carries a lot of force. I just wanted the extra support. Uh, this is, I don't know what you call these, but inside of it's threaded and there's a bolt coming through. And that's a grinded down bolt. And there's a bolt inside the lever. Uh, or there's a nut inside the lever. And the other side of this bolt has a slot cut in it, so I can actually screw it in from that side. And it tightens it on there, so it's really tight. Now, there's a little play at the levers, left and right-wise, but uh, these little things right here, 
the lever you can't squeeze them together very easily uh, so that works pretty good and there's quite a bit of tension on them I know they're real ones have quite a bit of force I might add a little bit more uh, force later it's kind of breaking in right now so the force is going down a bit but there's not any slack between it and the and the force down there there's not a whole lot of play or anything like that so it feels pretty good um, sometimes that lever won't fall in right it's getting better though I think I'm just being used Uh, I'm going to get the rubber to put on these, and I already have the label uh, made. Uh, probably just going to use like some bicycle inner tube or something like that. Uh, just some black strips or something to cover it up. Uh, still got this pedestal. Took the old Satek throttle out. I don't really want to do anything to it yet, so I just mounted these a little bit further forward. Left some space if I want to throw up like a fire panel or something. Add the space back here. I think I might add a printer in the future back there. So I'm going to make these uh, side pockets here, put the trim wheels on and all that good stuff. Uh, this is all interface with an Arduino through a program called NG Connect, which allows me to link it to uh, SIOC. Uh, it was originally linked straight with uh, like the COM port straight into a ProSim, but uh, that really wasn't working out. It was lagging. and. Every time I moved it, it was causing all my other potentiometers to start, uh, like these dimmers were messing up, because I had potentiometers for the dimmers on the screen, so I just moved it over to NG Connect, which I already used for uh, the shift registers I have driving the overhead annunciators. So that's how I did that. Uh, 